So first we're going to listen to Time Scar from Chrono Cross. It's a really beautiful theme and hopefully you'll enjoy it. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> cool, cool. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, I mean, I, I can imagine it's um, you know, perfect for... It's always the same, isn't it, really? Because there's a kind of front ground and background music in a way. And it, mm. it, it often this music feels up front initially. And then as it develops, it becomes background music in a sense. So, so it sets the theme up. It sets the feel up. And then it takes a step back. And the action, presumably, is happening all in front of you. So initially, you're in that kind of sort of odd. I mean, I felt like it was a real fusion of of Gaelic, Scottish, Irish, yeah, Japanese mm. kind of. You know that that feels. So you've got the the, the the pipe. You don't quite know whether it's a sort of Eastern sound or an Asian sound, or it's a or it's um or or a Scottish Irish um, folk yeah. pipe of some sort. Um, and then of course the, the tabor comes in or whatever it is, and, and you've got that sense. It's a real sort of um yeah driven. It's a really interesting kind of mix of West and East. Really, it feels. Um, I think it's quite interesting that, uh, and then when the violin is being pushed, you know, you've got that sense that it's that, that he's pushing it in a kind of um, Asian sort of way, a kind of Japanesey sort of feel to it. But actually, it sounds very Western. It sounds very sort of um, this mix of the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's very easy to listen to, isn't it? There's nothing, nothing. Yeah, no, no. How could one could possibly complain about that? I don't know. <laughs> The thing is, is that it, what I like about it, especially is that it, it feels, it feels very contemplative, which I really appreciate. It feels like, um, a stepping into action, a galvanization of sorts, a, a deciding to, you know, there's, there's a, a thing that occurs and then I have to sit here and contemplate, all right, well, what do I do about it? And then I take a step forward and I thrust myself into the action, but it is interesting how, um, it's so funny. I listen to music completely differently after the time you came on because I've been thinking more about like, oh, I just I like all this stuff so blanketly. I just enjoy it so much that I, it's hard for me to be critical about it. But it's one of the th corners that you know I think it's important to to look at music and figure out well where its pitfalls I I said are. Last time, I think what I was saying to the people I work with and the students often is I think I said to you is, is I ask them to be to critique, to be critical, to be able to sort of yeah. say why they do or don't like something. So but it's why, a, yeah. a negative thing. It's, I think it's a really clarif a clarifying thing for the mind of actually, uh, if you're interested, you don't have to do it, sit back and enjoy it. But if you are 
curious you know and you're, you why am i interested in that music what why is that track better than the other one what why is this one leading me into a place that i feel more comfortable or less comfortable all those things really um, yeah yeah i mean th i think this would make really quite a good um sort of contemporary ballet sort of soundtrack wouldn't it you could imagine yeah. really yeah. beautiful interesting choreography around that would be a kind of and again a fusion of of uh, different styles um yeah i think it'd be great dance music fantastic Mm -mm -mm. It's also crazy because it came out in 1999. So I mean, it's like you know, it's it's held up incredibly well with the trends and how things have shifted so much. But after all, I mean, you know, we're dealing with music. You know, some of you, you and I have, have experience with music from 300 years ago, and it's still just as relevant. And I think that that's also a misconception that people have is that music isn't relevant after a certain stage. But you, you know, it, 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 music sustains us in a way that a lot of passing trends and things can't, can't really keep up with, you know, the really good music that yeah, absolutely, stays. Absolutely. Um, and even, and I think even, even if people don't necessarily can't, don't have the vocabulary or, or the education specifically in music to be able to put a finger on it and say, you know, that that's 18th century or whatever. It's that thing of, there's a frame of reference, there's a kind of resonance that you sort of get drawn into and you understand something from it. So when um, we've been watching, I mean, it's, it's 10 years old, but we've just been watching the entire series of The Good Wife, which is, um, mm -mm -mm. It was on all those years ago. And it's quite interesting because at some point in about the fifth season or something, the music changes and they start using a kind of quasi pastiche Baroque feel mm. to it, uh, early classical. So that, So it's all slightly more in a way it just changes it shifts the way that you listen i think and the way you watch because it just becomes something else it, so before that they were using a whole variety of i don't know pop tunes and, and and different sort of um original writing i guess but suddenly when they started using this pastiche -y baroque style um it feels different it has a different way to it and it's actually slightly more comical there's a sort of sense that they are that they're just raising an eyebrow in the, in the later seasons that they've they've exhausted all the serious stuff and now they've got to go to silly. So <laughs> yeah, it's, just a hint. It's, it's quite clever and I like it. I like the fact that they suddenly use this music. It, it gives it um, a different twist somehow. Like a yeah, like a different energy. It's it's cool yeah. how music can do that. Um, oh god, I, I really I know that they want me to play this for you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna delay. I'm gonna hold off. <laughs> oh, jump in, jump in. <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. I'm not even sure that I like this song, but this is called. <laughs> it's well, cool. that was the quality of the playing the live um you know the beautiful fiddle player and various things was was very nice in that one yeah in times car yeah, yeah. Really good, really good. um this piece is called uh it's called bfg division but it stands for big fucking gun <laughs> so, so you can imagine where we're going this is um this is a, from a game called doom uh, BFG division, uh, you are the doom guy and you are literally slaying demons that emerge from hell. You, you are, you are the, the, the killer. You are, <laughs> you, they should not be afraid of you. You should, they should be, or sorry, you shouldn't be afraid of them. They are afraid of you, so to speak. And uh, it's a long one. So if at one point you raise your hand and you, you want to tap out <laughs> by all means.
Well, so actually, it's actually watching that music video is actually pretty impressive. Actually, seeing seeing how it's done. But but I, I'm curious, you know, your take on that. <laughs> well, it, it it is what it is. It's perfect, isn't it? I mean, it's just terrifying yeah. hell, yeah. Uh, yeah. hell in music, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, brilliantly brilliantly produced. I mean, it's so clean mm. in a way. The actual yeah. sound quality is it's is, crisp, right? Yeah, yeah, really, really clear. And I mean, the video is fantastic. And you know, with those 666 references keep popping up on the digital screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, it, it, it is, it's an idea of horrible, it could be a soundtrack to any war, couldn't it, and essentially, you know, in, in the thick of that that horrible, um, it's not meant to make you feel good, is it? I no. And maybe, maybe it does. I mean, maybe, maybe it's kind of a testosterone-packed, adrenaline-packed sort of, it's good at the gym, I will say. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It kind of makes yeah. you push yourself and keep going and all those things, yeah. I, I mean, think... it's, it, it's a sound world. It's a kind of, I wouldn't even, yeah, I don't think I'd describe that as, as in a sense, a composition. Um, I'd describe that as a kind of sound world creating, a sort of, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's layered stress, <laughs> layered anxiety, layered fear and terror. <laughs> Uh, um yeah well yeah. that opens very, up a discussion it's very, it's very intense i mean i can imagine you know as well if you were just kind of listening in a group of people like i don't know what that'd be like it would just be you can imagine everybody head banging away kind of mm -hmm. i mean do, do you think that um, when you think when you listen to music w w what are you listening for are you listening for melody like so it's interesting because video games do an interesting thing where um there are there are different types of obviously genres within music right and so um a prime example is a game that just came out dragon's dogma 2 there's not a melody in sight i mean there is but there's not really the whole point of it is like you're wandering around the lord of the rings-esque era area with big beautiful ferns and you know evergreen trees and you hear this like beautiful loot in the background that just sort of plays right it's very casual it's very it's it, it's not there's no melody like i can't remember any of the tunes from it and i and i wonder how important do you think melody is to telling a story? And do we need melody to tell a story if we can get away with ambient music or a soundscape, like in the case of BFG Division, which is not, it's not based around, it's not based around a melody, even though there is sort of one in there. Yeah. Like what, what's your thought process on, and if you want, I can play you an example of what I mean about, about ambient versus melodic, but I'm curious. What well, I think, um, I think, as I said before, there's a sort of uh, front ground, foreground, background thing going on in, in music that's for film and for video and various things like that, that either it's it's leading the action or it's supporting the action, I think. So there's, um, and I think we talked about this last time, but there's, um, in the past, you know, movies really were full of themes. You had movie themes. Yeah. So, of course, John Williams and others. Um, nowadays, m movies don't really have Themes. They don't have big musical themes anymore. But very rarely you go into a movie and you suddenly hear this great soaring, yeah. wonderful theme or something. You know, whether it's a song or whatever. Uh, I mean, I guess you get them maybe at the end, like in a Bond movie, you'll get the, the or the beginning, you'll get the kind of the new pop song that's written for it. But that's sort of that's all sort of been um, controlled. And, and and you know, talking as I've said to you before, that working on sessions, the. Um, it's very much kind of ambient sound now. It's kind of that ambience that they're trying to create, the sort of uh, the, the, the whole sound rather than a beautiful tune leading or an interesting theme or something like that. So there's few and few others around. Um, but I think they do different things, don't they, really? Because if, um, if you're going to allow the music to lead in a way, then one of perhaps two things have, have got to have happened. Either the story is so clear what's happening, so you are... Uh, in a place where the music can take off and you can actually just sit back a little bit and follow the musical journey. Um, yeah. So, for instance, if you took uh, Barbara Streisand and Robert Redford in The Way We Were, and when they're doing the big sailing shot, when they're on a yacht together, there is no dialogue. They're just on a yacht and they're sailing across wherever. And the big theme comes in, memory, da 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 da, -da or one of those big, wonderful Marvin Hamlish um, interlude sort of things. And clearly, it's the overall effect of this enormous, romantic, uh, intense, beautiful, perfect, held moment. Um, you don't need any action. The action is just the thing happening. The music tells you everything. And we're allowed to sit back for that moment um, uh, uh, and just enjoy it. Again, another moment would be um, um, raindrops keep falling on my head from mm. uh, a kid. Um, 
where we suddenly go into a kind of slightly surreal world where someone's riding around on a bicycle having fun and you've got this very modern song accompanying something from the 19th century in a way, an action from the 19th century. So it's, that's where the music's sort of allowed to take over and do a job for the actual storytelling. Um, and I think we see less and less of that. Although I did see a, a, a Wim Wenders movie the other day and he was very clearly using um, specific tracks and various things to capture because it was very, very little dialogue in the whole movie. Mm. The days. A really interesting movie, actually. Um, and so the, the, those tracks were allowed to rise up and you were allowed to just kind of listen to the pop song or whatever it is as some action was happening. But clearly it was meant to kind of frame a moment. You know, it's meant to frame a sort of a, a car journey or something, I don't know. Um, so that's where the music sort of takes over. So clearly the action is either so secure um, that the music is allowed to sort of come forward, I think. Otherwise, the melody, if, if you've got melody uh, clashing with action, then that probably becomes confusing because you're not quite sure what you're focusing in on, whether you're focusing on a clear melody or, or that, that strong musical line, that theme. Um, uh, or, or, or should you be concentrating on the detail, on the conversation, or whatever's happening in, in the in the actual uh, the film or the video? I guess, but I guess it comes down to a balance, doesn't it? When the when the action is um, is is not the primary thing in a sense, so we're not having to engage fully with every single second. Then maybe that's when the music sort of rises up, and when the action is is absolutely you know, full on and you have to engage, whether it's a dialogue or, or a, a, a game or whatever, when when you're really into the business of engaging and interacting, then the music has to support more, I think, rather than be sort of on the top. Yeah, that... um, <laughs> it's touch and go. I mean, I, I think that that's an interesting point. And I do, I, do, I do think that in a modern time period, yes, I agree with those things. Like when, when, when there's a moment where you, you're able to sit back, especially in a cut scene or something like that, that's when the music thrusts forward. But in modern gaming, I would say the more often than not, when you're adventuring or walking around, the music is really dialed in and there's not really a melody. However, that's a good segue into our next track. Thank you for that. Uh, one winged angel, which is, um, actually inspired by Stravinsky and the whole, uh, it, it, the, it's all inspired by the rite of spring and how it was written. Um, but that's the final boss theme again, of final fantasy, which he said, don't you get tired of fighting? Um, but, how many of there have been? There have been how many? Um, but uh, what's really interesting to me about this particular piece is that this is really the culmination uh, and the arrival point um, where we finally fight uh, this this larger than life uh, character named Sephiroth. And the whole story is actually really amazing. But um, this is like one of the most like lauded and famous video game tracks ever made. So.
am indeed on that recording. Oh, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do Distant that. Worlds? Yeah, I remember that. I remember doing that recording very clearly, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's this? AWR Records? That's so funny. Yeah. Well, if we did it. I don't know. We've done it at uh, Abbey Road or somewhere. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you already know that one. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's, and it was good fun doing that. It was good fun because it was quite yeah. a little bit more challenging than usual and, um, you know, very choral. Uh, and we had separate lines and, you know, rhythmically <laughs> it was a little bit more um, uh, challenging, perhaps a little bit, a tiny bit. It's interesting, isn't it? Because that's, it's great to hear it, actually. It's great. Um, so if you just took little chunks of it, because there's sort of four or five sections in there, yeah. Um, which I don't, and I'm not sure I've ever heard the complete the complete thing. Um, so the initial opening sec section, as you say, is is kind of Stravinsky esque a little bit. It's got that feel of that driven, and then slight. I mean, it's in four. Um, it's half speed as what what the uh, uh, writer Spring would have been, but it's got a little bit of a rhythmic a rhythmic moments uh, which are quite exciting. Um, and it's good. I mean, it's really good, interesting orchestral writing. And you're sort of you're going along with it and thinking, oh, you know, liking this. This is interesting. And it's 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 it's, it's very tonal. It's not particularly challenging um, harmonically or whatever, but it is it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and you sort of think this this could be a, a serious c contemporary piece of classical music uh, or contemporary music. And then. But it then gives itself away slightly because it, 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 the the um, there are a couple of moments. There's a kind of Hollywood moment where it has that Hollywood suspension, and then it resolves to something else to a little mm. comic moment. You just probably wouldn't have found that in. I mean, it could be a serious piece of musical music, um, but probably would be considered less for the fact that it has those different elements in it. That it doesn't develop themes. It sort of establishes a theme, mm -hmm. plays it for a bit adds a little bit and then shifts to something else slightly rather than this kind of building and exploring um but you know but it's it's strong isn't it it's it's strong stuff and it's it's kind of um very requiem meets whatever and um yeah yeah uh it's um yeah i mean it, it it's it, and it's beautiful beautiful good orchestration i mean real good orchestration you know you you the, the use of the orchestra the use of the layers and the, and the, the different qualities of the instruments is um is there and he was um, self-taught, which is even crazier to me. Was he really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. I mean, it make, that makes that's why it hooks me in because there's stuff happening around it, and and you know you you can hear the the violins or the oboe or the trumpet or whatever it might be, right, right, right. You know, coming out through there, and um, and there are enough harmonic shifts and um, that, that and key shifts in a way that allow that keep one's attention. I think you know, so it doesn't just keep going around in circles. It's um, it's 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 more than that. Definitely more than that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoyed that one. It's good fun, and uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I it couldn't stand up, you know, against um, a serious piece of classical music because it sort of has these little get outs, these little doors that it opens and enters into a different place slightly, um, which gives it away. It sort of goes, oh, what have you done? Why have you gone there? What was that about? Um, but clearly, whatever's happening on screen and what's happening in the action has driven that. Um, you know, because as we've talked about before, all of this music is 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 time specific. So we've yeah. got two minutes here, thirty seconds here, um, and, and I've said to you before. I think you know, as you read these scores, that they'll do micromanaging of um, beats per minute. So rather than just it says sixty BPM, you know, you'll get to a section where it'll say sixty two, and then sixty four, and then sixty nine. Well, nobody really would be able to beat that. You know, that's that's too much of a sort of incremental. What's the yeah. difference between sixty and sixty four? hardly anything so you really wouldn't know that but they put it like that because they know that then that fits and if you follow the um the click track then you just follow that click and it gets a little bit quicker or slower and it meets where, where it needs to meet um so so yeah i mean i think i mean that's that sophisticated interesting um music, <clears throat> I think, really. it's fascinating to me too i mean you know i've been thinking about like how this music could could stand in a classical hall and and personally you know i i it's interesting because like yes yes nostalgia glasses on you know that was the first big like thing that i played when i was a kid so like that hooks me in sure but objectively i'm also thinking to myself okay well like i it, it's so fascinating right because i know that these like i just went to a near a near concert in a, in chicago and there were like four thousand seats not not an empty seat in the house 
And so I know that this music drives people to it, to it. Um, but I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is how to, I get, and, and maybe it doesn't need to be legitimized, but how do you legitimize this music so that it does, or can it stack up against classical music and can it, can it be paired along? You know what I mean? It's such an interesting. Well, it does get paired along. I mean, you know, there are more concerts like that happening now with, with, with the, I mean, John Williams has been appearing in serious classical concerts for a very long time, but, um, but then he has a sort of broader range, um, I guess, and to a certain extent. But um, yeah, d does it need to, I don't know. Uh, it, it depends what the outcome is really. What are you trying to do? You're trying to get, are you trying to broaden a classical audience uh, so that they're listening to this music or more of this music? Or are we trying to educate a video game audience um, to lead them to what I would say is is greater, you know, greater quality music of of, mm. of the last two three hundred years, um, but is much is is more demanding to listen to perhaps, but will de still deliver. You know, I think anybody coming out of that and then going seeing Rite of Spring would would probably be thrilled. I would have thought they'd sit through Rite of Spring and go, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, it's it's yeah. extraordinary. Um, and and Rite of Spring is a is a great piece of music. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think it'd be fantastic to, especially in this day and age, to get audiences that are, are listening to this, and then feed them some other stuff, um, and, and maybe do a comparison concert. That sort of feeling, you know, where does this music come from, and how does it, you know, what is its origin? What are its origins, really? Um, yeah. Uh, and so whether it is, a, a, as you say, a, a Russian folk song or a uh, a piece of Brock music, a piece of Bach, you know, th those influences, um, I think could make a really interesting program, actually, couldn't it? You play some Bach and then you play... Some yeah, I mean, that would be the dream, wouldn't it? I, I yeah. honestly, I wish I could do that on the channel, but the, the classical music industry is so, so tight about copyright claims and, and issues yeah. that I, I can't, that was the original scope of the channel was a nice comparison and contrast video. And, and simply they can't be done because of the nature of the, of the thing. It's, it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. The classical you music. You can't even play two minutes of Stravinsky without having to pay. No, not without having to, to, to own the license. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It sucks because there's so much there now. Now for me, I would love it if, if, this music could integrate well it's twofold get get people that are that love this music to get into i mean this has been viewed it's 2018 so 1 million 251 thousand times wow. people clearly like it yeah, yeah, yeah getting this getting those 1 million people well obviously there's other barriers but getting them into a concert hall to listen to the to old greats from 200 300 years ago but then also getting the people that are in that audience that pay that subscription to be like hey there's a whole bunch of music that's been going on on the scene that you may love that is is valid valid i'm not whether or not it's better that, that's ultimately yeah. like we can get into the semantics of that but like you know but ultimately there's a whole like a lot of people and certainly myself in modern opera com compositional you know a lot of modern opera is not good and i it's interesting that all of the very good great fantastic like modern compose a lot of them anyway i have discovered that there's such a vast majority of them that are in this video game music world um and it's a fascinating thing and and, and that that conversation is interesting and so getting people that love classical music to come over and be like oh wow look at this so ideally you'd merge the two and then you have a perfect sem uh, perfect i think i've said to you before get, get ben parry on have, have him on your program um because mm. I think he just only a few months ago was in Birmingham doing this very, I think, I don't, was it Final Fantasy? But he was doing a mixed concert with the Birmingham Symphony. Um, and it was there was a concerto in there. In the middle of it, there was a piano concerto or something, uh, which was from a video game. Oh. But, you know, um, and the place was packed. Yeah. It was absolutely to the rafters with people. Um, and he said, you know, this, this, get these people in. We need to get, he's absolutely for getting, getting this music played um, alongside classical music. Uh, why not? Why not? I mean, it, it seems, yeah, why not? I was just listening. Um, so I don't know, you, you've probably come across, but Eric Korngold, who is the mm -hmm. sort of father of, of Hollywood music. Yeah. Um, but what's really interesting about Eric Korngold is that as a child, as a young uh, prodigy, he was as famous as you can imagine like back in Austria. And to the point where one of his operas, um, uh, whatever it's called, 
Die Tote Stadt. Die Tote Stadt, ja, City of the Dead. Um, was, was premiered twice on the same night. So two different theaters did two productions. Um, oh my God. He was that big. And of course, then along comes uh, the, 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 the Nazi movement and the um, they have to run away and he ends up in Hollywood. So what yeah. he brings with him is this extraordinary world that he'd created, this, this sound world. And he then starts using it for movies. So he didn't change anything. Essentially, what we hear in those early movies is Korngold doing what he does, whether it's a violin concerto or whatever. Yeah. And that became the sound of Hollywood. People then started saying, wow, like that. Let's start doing something different. You know, so, so um, those other composers came along. And that became, you know, that's where John Williams essentially comes from in a way. This, this mm -hmm. really serious classical musician who was respected in the first 30 years 20, you know, of the, of the last century in Austria and around becomes a movie writer. Um, and so, so movie music and themed music has a really wonderful history. You know, it, it doesn't come from something cheap. It comes from something incredibly sophisticated. Um, and I think, I think most composers who are writing for video games, they're not trying to write cheap music. They're trying to write sophisticated, interested, complex, you know, but that delivers what it needs to deliver. So there are, there, they have really quite a... strict parameters, but yep. they're, they're digging deep. And, and so, and, and you know, not all of it works and some of it's very derivative as we've spoken about before. Yeah. Yeah. Derivative of itself, you know, it sort of just sort of gets weaker and weaker. Um, but you know, some stuff comes like that and it's, it, this is good, isn't it? This is great music. This, yeah. is, this is solid. Yeah. Uh, good conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's move on to something uh, uh, similarly interesting as One Winged Angel. This is by a, a, um, a person named Jesper Kidd, and uh, this is called The Immortal Imperium. It's from a, uh, do you know the Warhammer series? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, maybe you sang on this too, for all I know. <laughs> I may have done, who knows? Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is called The Immortal Imperium. It's from Warhammer Dark Tide. Uh, very gritty, very, very you know, it's, it's a, it's a very brutal world and the music reflects it, but, but it does this beautiful thing with Gregorian chant and, and with, yeah, I think you'll, I think you'll appreciate it.
doing the thing again, isn't it? It's got that, uh, it's the, um, it's clever. It's clever stuff, actually, because it's, uh, it's like the machines talking. That, that the machines yeah, 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 yeah. Creating yeah. the sound and, and, it, and it shifts that, uh, the pitch shift, um, which is either done, you know, just electronically. Yeah. Um, which then happens when the organ comes in and it shifts with it in a way. So it's using that kind of key shift, the, the pitch shift, but through through the organ bit. It's clever because I think um, the, the, the machine is speaking. It's hard, metallic. It's impermeable. Um, it's dangerous. It's, a, it's got this feeling like a bomb's going to go off or something. Um, pulsating, this kind of heartbeat. Wah, wah, yeah, wah, yeah, wah, yeah. All that sort of stuff. And then suddenly you get these voices, these kind of real voices on the top that um, feel both connected and not connected. They don't feel that they're part of that world. You don't feel that the, the chant or the, or the thing is coming out of that, but it feels like it's echoing it or, or they're somehow connected. There's somehow, there's, there's 500 years between them, but somehow there's a, mm -hmm. a connection. Um, and then when the organ comes in, it suddenly feels, uh, you know, that, that could any be anything from 18th century through to 20th century organ concerto or something, you know, organ right, hymn right, or right. <clears throat> um, so, so it's, it's, I think, as we've said before, that the, the, it's the frame of reference. It's, it's what music, it's where, where music makes you jump. So I'm sure if we did a test of you, you played certain sorts of music and said, just press which button, you know, make, it makes you think of this or, or it makes you feel this. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if the majority of people would come up with the same sort of thing, you know, playground, uh, going to the doctors, if you had choice of things, um, uh, waiting outside the headmaster's office or something, you know, you, you'd go, yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. Um, <laughs> and I think that's what good composers do. They, 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 they read the script, they look at the, the action, they look at the animation, they look at the storytelling and they go, okay, what is that? What, what does it make me feel? And, and what sort of music would, would promote that, provoke that feeling in me? You know, how do I, where and where does that come from? Um, and clearly, you know, sort of choral chanting, as we said last time, has a, a brilliant two sides of the coin, a sort of double, double side, isn't it? A coin, really. One, one is saintly and beautiful and right. I'm going to get married and it's all gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. And the other is, I'm going to hell. I'm surrounded by these voices <laughs> yeah. who, are, who are singing me to hell. Yeah. And it doesn't, they can sing the same thing almost and just give it a different, slightly shift underneath. And you're going one way or the other, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so I, I love the blending of the two. I love the blending of the old and the new, you know? Yeah, no, I like that. And, I, and it's very, and it feels suddenly that very intense, wired electric sound suddenly kind of go, opens up suddenly when you get the, the voices and the organ coming in. It feels like space has arrived. And there's, um, and it's look, I was just looking at the image there was just a constant, this closed in, I don't know, half destroyed, air cooled, something or other, I don't know, whatever it is, um, spaceship or something. Um, and, and it felt very claustrophobic. It felt like I couldn't get out. Yeah. And then suddenly those voices arrive and you go, oh, there's a bit of fresh air. It's interesting that you talked about that, though, uh, about the um, the heartbeat and the mechanical thing, because they do, you know, pray to the machine god. And so oh. there's the hu human <laughs> element mixed in with the Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's like a sort of mechanical heart, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. The heartbeat there. It's like this alarm. It's 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 cool. The video games aren't, they're not stopping soon, are they? I mean, video games is the biggest uh, economy. More revenue than movies, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow, it's just so many composers coming out of the woodwork, too. Yeah, you know? yeah. And when we do these things, um, I'm doing few, less and less than these days, but, you know, often on, on a single uh, um project there'll be three five six seven composers all involved um, ah, all in the same place and you use ah yeah yeah it's really interesting it's cool let's move over to um do you think ai is going to get involved do you think they're just going to hand this over to ai and ai will just i don't think it has the humanity for it i mean maybe but this is so i mean this is complex stuff like it's simple in its writing sometimes but it's, it's complex i really can't fathom that ai will I think it will be used uh, depending on budget, but I don't think it's possible that it will be, it will replace okay. that human touch. Not in the conversation. I think you made a good point there about it. It doesn't really matter. Um, again, we're generalizing slightly, but it, the, 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 the simplicity of a score um, can cover up really the complexity of the, the process. You, you end up with something yeah. that sounds essentially very simple. And you go, well, I could have written that. And the truth is 
no, I couldn't. No, you couldn't, because this person has done this, this, and this to get to that point of being able to produce this exquisite, very beautifully fashioned, clever. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, there are programs that you know will will replace horns and different instruments, you know, VSTs and things. Th those those are a hit or miss because the MIDI can sound so bad that it's really hard yeah. to, you know, deviate. So, so I think like if you try to use AI there, I actually don't think even the most uneducated person about music is going to listen to that and feel that something is wrong and something's not right. You know, because some of us are more purist than others about like I'm, I'm becoming more purist about, I mean, ultimately for me, it doesn't care as long as the emotion is, is like delivered really well but i am starting to even be able to notice when something is not orchestrated with the proper orchestra and, and it, it does it does take away some of the the gravitas of an experience when it's like and, and it's, oh, yeah. it's there's um sometimes i try and pretend to be a bird when i'm walking and talk to thrushes and things and they very <laughs> rarely they very rarely respond you know um because even though i think i'm doing a very good impression of a thrush the thrush sort of says, what the hell's that? You know, that's, that's, that's nothing to do with me. I don't know what that noise is, but it's nothing to do with me. Yeah. Um, and I, I get, I think, you know, that's that sort of deep wired in us, that sense of being able to engage, connect with human voice, with human created emotion and sound that, uh, I mean, I, I may be proved wrong, I suppose, in 10, 100 years time. Thing, yeah. But, um, but I, I, I can't help thinking... Well, it'll be a very sad day if if that if if we lose that somehow. I think if so. That actually our, our antennae are wired for something that's electronic and and, and false. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like a, a a good piece of music is a good piece of music, but you can't you can't take away the sound of a, a two hundred a person choir. And now I can't really tell the difference between a. An, like a, a choir made from like a keyboard and a choir made from a voice. But there is, when you compare the two, you can really tell the difference in terms of breath and in terms of tone and in terms of how it like just sings. And, um, and, and yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you're right. It's, it would be a sad day when you can't like yeah. Yeah. have both. Um, let's I mean, maybe one day the AI will be so good that they will absolutely incorporate voices that drop out and the false start and the slightly sharp thing, you know, so you have 200 voices or two, 200 separate voices singing the same thing. And yeah, maybe one day we'll go, I can't tell the difference. I can't. Yeah. Um, and maybe it'll have some sort of crazy system wired into it that, that you know, makes mistakes that you don't know it's going to make. So then you go, well, it must be human because there's a mistake there. Right. <laughs> if it did it again, it would make a different mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Millennia Blade of Mikola. This is from Elden Ring. Have you heard of Elden Ring? No. Elden Ring is a game that came out a couple of years ago and it's taken the world by storm and uh, two years ago. And it um, it is Wagnerian in its <clears throat> story structure and <clears throat> it's really impressive stuff. Um it's it's a really bleak open world where you travel and you don't know where you're going and everyone is out there to kill you and it's anywhere you turn you you never really know where you're going to end up and this is uh this is uh an interesting character in and of herself um it took me six hours to beat her she's incredibly difficult not in all in one sitting but i died a lot let's put it that way um but she's yeah it's it's uh, i'm curious to see what you can extrapolate from her theme and also what you think of the music too
So for me, that's kind of the weakest one you've played so far today, for me. That's sort of, uh, I mean, it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? It's very rich, huge orchestration. I don't know how much of that is electronic or, or real. Most of it sounds quite real. Um, but essentially, you know, those two minutes, best part of two minutes of a pedal note um, and just people moving around it. So it always sounds, that always sounds very exciting. You know, wow, bow, yeah. dow, dow, and you can do whatever you like around it because you've got this pedal note just hitting all the time. It feels dangerous and grounded and exciting. And, uh, and pedal notes are, they give you that. They give you permission to just keep doing little microtone movements and semitones and little shifts. And, uh, and then it just keeps bringing you back to home all the time. So that was two minutes of that. Uh, and of course it was you know, perfect, I suppose. It's, it's, it's atmospheric. Um, and, then, and then it sort of shifted into a kind of Carl Orff world. Um, and then essentially for the, the, the last two minutes was um, essentially just a cadence being repeated. So it sort of <laughs> gives you the pedal note, drops down to the fourth, goes up a semitone, gets to the fifth, <laughs> and then resolves. And, then, and the same thing is happening. So it's this same kind of, oh, it's we're here at home. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't move, shift. yeah. And then, and then, and then the little shift. That's a bit exciting. You weren't expecting that. And yeah. then it gets the 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 the, the, um, uh, the, the, the fifth. Da, 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 and then it resolves again. And then you go round. And that happened. I don't know, three, five, six times or that. <laughs> um, and but you know, it's it's satisfying. It's like eating fish and chips or, or a burger or something. It's um, it uh -huh. kind of does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? Really, I just don't think it's. I, I sort of think if I had the equipment, I, I, I could I could create that. If I knew how to put the 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 the, got the um the, the um tubular bells in and how I yeah you know, make, make the fiddles do what they do, I think I could do that. Well, so is, that fails my the Bardsley test. I think I could do that. Therefore, it can't be very good. <laughs> could you want to see it in context? Yeah, GC. You know, a sixteen-year-old, fifteen-year-old person could come up with that if they had the right equipment. I think they would do. Yeah. Okay. I, I respect that. I'm really curious to see how it how it changes in context, if at all, um, because context, you know, it's funny. I used to be very anti context and I still sort of am. But I do find that when I when I just listen to a piece, sometimes I'm like, oh, OK, that's nice. But, th but then when I watch it, I'm like, oh, that's why, because it needs some pieces need the the family dynamic of the visuals as well. Um, that should but that but that, that but that's it, isn't it? There's a program. I think I, I think I told you. Um... Oops, thank we're crossing. We've got a bit of a job. Um, I think I told you there's a there's a radio program on on in the BBC and it's uh, movie movie mm -hmm. things really movie music, and I can never listen to it. I just can't get through it because after a bit I just think it's missing something. It's missing the the reason it exists. It's missing that reason. Um, and certain you know in the past yeah there are great themes Michelle Legrand and Marvin Hamlish and whoever. And of course I can listen to those absolutely. But when when someone says, you know, oh, this is this is music from this movie, and you just go, but without the images, I, this music really is meaningless. It sort of just becomes a bit vapid sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I think context usually is everything. She has something called the scarlet rot, which is causing her body to slowly decay from the inside. Oh, yeah. Lost an arm. Yeah. I dreamt for so long. My flesh was dull gold and my blood rotted. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. As I awaited his return. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola.
And I have never known defeat. We can fast forward <clears throat> just to um, 420. It's all very, um, it's all very religious, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this in this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody who would say there's no religion in this series of games is completely wrong because it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, rebirth, crucifixion, there's there's all that stuff, the godskin apostles, you know, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, did, did the obviously did the context help that for you a little bit more? Was it yeah, was it I mean, more appealing? Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's, it's perfect, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. that. That constant, yeah, it's a constant terror, you know, and, and uh, so, yeah, of course, it's, it's it interesting. Works in yeah. context, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's fun. It's fun. I, mean, I think it's fun. I think it's uh, it's it's quite tame in a way. It's quite um, it's quite traditional, isn't it? It's got it's got a sort of you know he's using the, the, the those kind of symphonic ideas and the, and the kind of Karloff, Carmina yeah. Burana kind of feel oh, to it. It's, it's they they all do all, all the time, and yeah. And you sort of think and there must be different ways of doing that now. There must be ways, and it might be leaving behind some of these tropes, the the choral singing and the bells and all that stuff, and actually finding different ways of expressing that. You know, maybe there are, there are different ways um, that that have the same effect. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I, I sort of think, yeah, I still think it's a bit lazy. I still think it's a bit sort of <laughs> he's gone and used whatever whatever is lying around really. <laughs> Let's move on. We got. I want to listen to two more tracks. Uh, speaking of this, this has just won a bunch of awards. Um, this is from Baldur's Gate Three, one of the biggest games of last year. Basically, like, yeah, it, it was. It won every award possible. And uh, this particular track is the Devil's track, Raphael's final act, and you fight him in this. And uh, this did something pretty unconventional for video games, uh, but I'm curious what you think about it. And I know you're going to be right at home with this sort of soundscape as well. Um, Borisov Slavov has done something really interesting in general, not with this particular track, but um, he's modernized medieval music, which is very cool. Um, okay. 
And I mean, this, this, is this particular track seven months ago, it was uploaded and there's five, almost 5 million views on it. So. Lives, all mortal lives expire. Souls go to their dooms in flame forevermore. in the cause, curtain falls, but hold your applause, squirm, squirm, for now down here come the claws. So the, the, he's literally singing this while you're fighting him. And it's very funny because this game allows you to actually, you can, I forget how, how you, if you silence him, you can actually mute the song. <laughs> so it just ends up, it's very diegetic in that way where the, the music is occurring on, you know, while you're playing, but it, it's fun. I, I mean, you know, it's not, I don't think it's that deep, but I, I do think it's, it's, it's something that a lot of video game audiences has never heard before. You know, I like the idea of that, that actually the character is singing at you and, and goading you as, with the music. And yeah. so it comes, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, and yeah, and of course, the age group is for this sort of game is what anything from 15 20 to 50. Yeah. No, it's 20 to 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you said 12. Would you say 12? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't know. What are you allowed to? Are they? Do they have ratings? Do they allowed to? Yeah, they do. Yeah, I mean, a twelve-year-old could theoretically play this, but it, okay. it was made mostly for your Dungeons and Dragons fan. Okay. You know, yeah. my age, twenties, twenties, thirties. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's context again is everything. I think it's um, yeah, yeah. It, it's a very simple song. It's again, it's a three three chord progression, and it's um, and the the lyrics were. Well, AI could probably have produced those, I think. I did a little test, actually, the other day for AI, being a writer, and um, I asked AI to write me a poem about snow. Uh -huh. And as soon as I went click, you know, the poem appeared. It was yeah. just whoosh straight away. Um, and I thought, you know, if this was handed to me by a 16-year-old, 15-year-old in, in a school, I'd go, okay, you've got some really good ideas here, There's some nice <laughs> thoughts, you've got some nice words. Let's try and just make it a little bit more nuanced or whatever. And then I said, write me um, a, a a 19th century of Dickensian ghost story um, happened, you know, instantly. Uh -huh. And again, if it was done by a teenager in school, you'd go, you've picked up some really good thoughts here. You've, you've captured some of those ideas, but it was terribly naive. There was a sort of naivety and a sort of generic feel to both of those things. Um, and, and, and that, you know, that those lyrics and that music, that little section was just felt a bit like a, a bit of Jesus Christ superstar meets, <laughs> 
Rocky Horror meets. Yeah, yeah, it's you know. yeah, it's almost it's almost a pastiche, if you will. Yeah, but it but it does the job again. It's it, the context; it does the job, and it's um, and they know what they're doing. They want that. They want that pastiche. They want that sense yeah. of yeah. Uh, this is you know a baddie singing a song like they might sing. Um, so I, I think it. I, I can. I guess it works. It works, doesn't it? It works. So um, I, I'm not sure you can. I don't think it benefits anything to be too critical about it, actually, tell you the truth. I sort of feel bad about pointing my finger at it because I think, yeah, it, it's clear what that's trying to do and it probably achieves it perfectly. You know, yeah. so um, so I think, you know, the, the, yeah, I think the lyrics could have been, could be better. Definitely. You're also a lyricist too. So I am a lyricist, but I think they could be better <laughs> and still and still um, do, do what they... The, the, the producers and the directors want them to do. I think. I think they could be a little bit more sophisticated. Yeah. Um, it's a. It's a really interesting thing about Baldur's Gate Three because um, it's going to be for the first time. It's going to be performed live at the South Bank Center's Royal Festival Hall. Yeah. Uh, in a couple months, at the time of this filming, so it's it's crazy because again, like that's gonna. I don't know how many the, how many seats that that theater is. I don't know if you uh, know. Two. Is it two thousand? because I, uh, I, uh, yeah. I did one of the final fantasies there so, oh you did yeah so i mean it's yeah. it's not nothing and i know that 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 thing sold out like that and so yeah. again it's this discussion where hey this is really exciting because at the very least not only are people going to be able to go and see music live which ultimately is always the, the that's great thing. it means that an actor singer is going to get a gig they're going to be there singing exactly. acting the orchestra uh yeah. fantastic fantastic and as an actor, who wouldn't want to do that role? Who wouldn't want to play that baddie in a pantomime? It feel, that's what it felt like. It felt like a British a pantomime. pantomime. Mm. And, and those songs that were somebody would write for a pantomime for a baddie. You know, I'm bad, bad. Yeah, I'm really bad. <laughs> uh, don't make me sad. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> it, that's what it does. And everyone would giggle and laugh and the children would think it's terrifying and, you know, terrific. It's so... um Hooray, hooray for the South Bank Centre. They will make money out of it, that's for sure. <laughs> that, that's for absolutely sure. Yeah. Has this sort of shaped or changed your perspective at all from the last time, or is it more of the same? Or were, were there were there some things that were more insightful this time? Or, or you know, what, what was your sort of takeaway from this experience? Um, well, I, I came with a slight sort of better prepared this time. Than, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure I've changed that much, really, because I think I still would stand my ground and say, you know, the, the music of Stravinsky and Beethoven possibly, or Debussy or uh, whoever, Prokofiev, definitely, uh, Shostakovich, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and and those great, the, the Andre Previns of this world who wrote, you know, fantastic film music and operas and various things, they've absolutely informed all this music. Of course they have. Um, and Tubular Bells, did this 50 years ago, you know, they took that kind of classical idea and made it very exciting. And I think what, what probably determines whether the piece is, does it for me or not, is just how visceral it is, how, how, how much it engages and grabs me mm. initially. And I think if, you know, that big choral thing um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the bigger piece, which I thought was just One derivative. Angel. Yeah, it just, I just thought, I've heard all that before. I've heard that sound well before. There's nothing new in here. It yeah. absolutely, it's like going back to a place for a meal that you know is going to taste in a particular way. Um, whereas some of the other things you've played for me today have been much more diverse and much more interesting and have been exploring more. I remember one, I, I, um, that guy you played me who, who was going through different styles of music. Each, each game had a different, uh, either Western or Asian or influence different influences from around the world oh genshin um, impact yeah yeah which yeah, i really didn't... liked i liked the fact that that was you know that was really interesting um so i think i think it's i mean i would i would encourage all your listeners and, and your viewers to to just maybe keep an ear out and go you know what this is a new game but i've heard that music before this music it sounds like that other game i bought five years ago or three years ago and if it does then maybe go well is this is that good or is that does it matter? You know, is it just wallpaper? Is that all it is, really? Or is there something different about it? Has it shifted slightly? Is there? Is, is it allowing a, a musical theme to develop in a way that it didn't before? I don't know. Um, but I think that's what I'm listening out for. I'm listening out for something that really catches my ear and grabs me and is visceral and attention-grabbing 
Um, and that could be through the orchestration. It could be um, through that mix of the electronic and the and the, yeah. and the, the, the real voices and the, the organ and various things. Um, rhythmically, I want it to be interesting. Harmonically, I want it to be interesting. Um, and if it's not harmonically interesting because there's that pedal note all the time, then I want fireworks going off around it. I want it to be, you know, really stretching my imagination with, the, with, the, with the, what it's putting against that pedal note. Yeah. Um, so I suppose I might be a bit of a demanding listener, maybe. Um, well, I mean, there's 40 years of it. Surely there is something that, you know, I, I think that that's also the interesting component, too, is that there's 40 years of musical yes, history. Totally there. Yeah. Surely there is like a whole sector of video game music that you would probably be crazy about. It's just yeah, finding yeah, yeah. those things, you know, and that's, yeah. that's that's the thing when people are like, oh, you didn't show them this. And it's like, well, I don't I, I don't even think about that. You know what I mean? Because my yeah, taste yeah. also yeah. influenced the choices and also like picking yeah. from, you know, so it's, it's all. I'd love to hear. I mean, you know, if, we, if I ever come on again. But I, even if I don't, I'd love you to send me some stuff that is is really different, really spatially different, has a different context to it. You know, using purely electronic instruments or just pure voices. You know, acapella, sure. just stuff that that um, stands out in a way that's doing something. Um, and I, I get it. You know, if you, if it's a, if it's a fight video, and you need to build the, the 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 adrenaline, you need to kind of get people's hearts beating. You've got to have the drum beats. You've got to have that that pedal. You've got to have that driven sound. Um, of course, of course, of course, of course. What you know, we only there are only a certain amount of tools we have, I suppose. Um, so it's not surprising that they keep coming back. And of course, if you visit all the classical music, especially all the romantic literature, composers are using the same stuff all the time. Of yeah. course they are. Of course they yeah. are. They just use it slightly differently. And, but yeah, if you, want, if you want to keep... wake people up, you put symbols together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you want some suspension, do a drum roll. Right, exactly. Nice, nice <laughs> going, you know? so, um, yeah, at the end of the day, good. yeah, it's true. Well, that that's good to know. I mean, yeah, certainly uh, I've, I'll spin my brain for more ideas. And if you want to leave a comment for Garth, feel free to leave a comment. Perhaps he will take a look at those and and well, pick out some music that uh, that will appeal to him as well. And, and Garth, thank you so much for coming on and spending time with me again. It's always a pleasure to I'll spend tell you, time with you. Just before we go, just one final thing which is um the is it the oh the, the oscar winning movie um uh pretty no what's it oh crikey the one about frank the frankenstein story i forgot with emma emma whatever what it's called uh, everyone knows what i'm talking about yeah, yeah, yeah um the music track is brilliant because when we first meet the character the sort of frankenstein child um she's a you know she's a baby even though she's a fully grown woman she can't walk she can't speak and the music i hadn't realized until about 15 20 minutes in that the music the score evolves as the character evolves so as the as the character becomes more sophisticated and more grown up the music becomes more sophisticated and grown up so initially it's just plinky plonk and, and noises and scratches oh. and scrapes oh, that's and, awesome. and weird things and then eventually it becomes more melodic it becomes more cohesive more coherent uh, and very expressive and i thought that was brilliant what a brilliant idea that the music absolutely echoes the, the journey the development of the character, of the character. Yeah. that's awesome well you'll have to let me know what the name of that is because i yeah, love to you, watch everyone that. will know what i'm talking about my yeah. brain is just switched off so. <laughs> well thanks garth we'll talk to you soon i really appreciate it yeah thank you mark and good luck with this bye. you're doing great things bye. oh thank you thank you thank you thank you bye